So what's Eid then? Eid. Uh, we can talk about two Eids. So there's two. There's two Eids. That's, that's the first important. Yeah, that is the main yeah. thing. There, <laughs> yeah. there is two. There is two. Um, I know because they're quite close by this year. Um, it feels like we've just had one Eid already passed and now another one's coming up. So they change. And what and why do they change? They change So with you've the... got, we go by the lunar calendar in Islam. Um, so we've got our own months and stuff. So after the month of Ramadan, which we know is the fasting month, um, is followed by Eid, which is a celebration, a feast, as everyone loves, you know, when Eid comes around, everyone knows they're going to get goodies in the office. Um, <laughs> but coincidentally, even the other Eid is a feast as well. So we've got Eid al-Fitr, that's the proper name of it, um, which is the first one. And that is um, the one after Ramadan, so the month of fasting. And then the one coming up is Eid al-Adha. So that is um, the Eid, kind. it's like a, the sacrifice of Abraham. So we call him Abraham, Christians call him Abraham, I think Jews call him Abraham, Abrahamic religion. So um, it's interesting to see how like that all interlinks as well. But that one is also a feast. Um, okay. Yeah. That is, that Eid al-Adha comes after the month of Hajj. So you've got like the pilgrimage month and then we come Eid al-Adha and you tend to like, the story of it is... I'm not going to go into too much detail, otherwise we'll be here all day, Mm. but it's pretty much the sacrifice that Prophet Abraham made for God to show his willingness and devotion. Um, Right. Yeah, so, and God replaced that with, like, an animal, and that's what we do is we sacrifice an animal, and we separate that meat, and so, like, everyone cooks that meat for Eid, so it's a very meaty kind of feast. Right. Um, But equally just as fun as the other Eid. So So one, so am I right in thinking then, and please correct me if I'm one's kind of around fasting yes and why and why is the fasting what why is that done uh fasting is done um it's like a reset of the year for a lot of Got muslims you. uh in during that month obviously we're fasting mm. but it's not just fasting we're doing we're um bettering yeah. ourselves we're looking inwards we're gaining that spirituality giving more to charity um a lot of self inwards kind of reflection i think Personally, for me as well, it's a really good time to check in with your mental health. Yeah. Um, kind of step back, look at what you can change going for the rest of the year. So it's a bit like how everyone has like New Year's. You've yeah. got like your New Year's yeah. resolution. That's us for us. Yeah. It's like a reset. Like you've got a month of no distractions, aside from obviously your daily routine. <laughs> um, and then you've got like everything that comes within. Like we're up most of the day. We're hardly sleeping because obviously you're getting up first thing in the mm. morning to have your breakfast before the sun rises. And then you're fasting pretty much all the way until the sun sets. Um, and within that time, it's not just a fact of, oh, I can't eat all day. It's refraining from like bad behavior, um, trying to keep cool, like making sure you're doing more prayers. Charity is a big thing during Ramadan as well. So mm. I think after that whole month and then being able to have a celebration after that, um, it's just nice to celebrate all your wins as well. Yep. Um, unite with the family, see how theirs went. Mm. It's, um, yeah, it's a beautiful day. Like you start it off, a lot of people, at least in Leicester anyway, mm. start it off in the park because there's um, the Eid prayers first thing in the morning, right. which is really grounding because you've got like the birds singing, mm. the sun's out, nine times out of 10, the sun's out, <laughs> <laughs> luckily for us. And yeah, it's just a really nice way to kind of like meet everybody after nice. a month of kind of hibernation. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's yeah. good. So you've got fasting and then that ends with a celebration and you've got like pilgrimage and that ends with a celebration. Yeah. So it's kind of two core themes there. Yeah. Along yeah. with everything else that goes with it. Yeah. Exactly. There's yeah. a lot that goes behind it to result in it. And yeah. I think it's nice to just know that there's a celebration of <laughs> you trying to do better for yourself as well as like everything around you, everyone around you. It's not just like a self-centered kind of thing. Mm. It's something to unite everybody yeah. as well, I think. And a lot of people wouldn't know that, I don't think, unless unless that's something yeah, they've no, always no, no, definitely. Know, celebrated. Yeah, no, I think there's so... I think because, I mean, I, I know... I was trying to get the figure the other day, 1.9 billion Muslims around the yeah. whole world. Everyone celebrates differently. So being able to see everybody's kind of like different traditions and takes on how they celebrate mm. Eid come together, especially in such a diverse city as Leicester as well. Yeah. Um, that kind of meeting and being like seeing different cultures and people from different backgrounds unite together and the different things they do, I think is also a beautiful way. Mm. So, I mean, we could sit here forever and talk about the different ways people celebrate, the different backgrounds that they come from. But um, it is, I think each time we have Eid, 
it's just a beautiful you always meet someone new and you're always learning something new mm. and I think that's beautiful is that whole unity in the whole thing um and you get to do it twice a year nice yeah and that's a good segue saying the word unity there because um, that's yeah. why <laughs> that's why you're here so we can do it we can do an introduction so you are I am uh, Latifa. Yeah. I am um, a recruiter, obviously, in head office. I have been here, oh gosh, I've been here coming up to 18 years. At Next. In, at Next. Next. Uh, oh, not just in <coughs> recruitment, but just generally. Started as, I think a lot of people have started off as temps back in the day studying um, and just worked my way through various areas and ended up in recruitment. Who knows where it'll take me next. But, <laughs> um Part of that, obviously, I joined Unity, yeah. um, as well as being a mental health first aider as well. So it's, I think that's also a bit of a nice combination as well, because being part of Unity was really important for me in terms of being somebody who people can look at and say, I can relate to that person. Mm. I feel comfortable knowing that they're going to know something about me. And as for well. those people that might not know or might not have watched another episode or, you know, on in Next, maybe, what is Unity at Next? <laughs> um, <laughs> I know, I think of like the three C's. We don't need to talk about the no, three C's. What, what, but is, what, what is it? What is me, it to you though? What is um, it to you? For or me, how would you it's describe a, it? It's yeah. a network of being able to celebrate um, different cultures, traditions. It's like a cultural hub for everybody at Next. So it's a place. Where, it's a safe place. Place safe place yeah. for you to be able to share your stories get to know other people have difficult conversations as well I think that's a really important one because sometimes people are afraid to ask certain questions and it's to know like you can ask anything you want mm. talk about anything you want um and I think just obviously we know how big next is as well being able to put our staff in a spotlight to show their difference mm. and how the company kind of works with that and mm. celebrates it as well um, I think there's been a lot about celebration of different people and that we have at Next and showcasing that. And I think that's beautiful. So for me, joining Unity, it was a lot about sharing the different people that we have at Next, mm. the cultures, the traditions, the way we've worked together as well. Obviously, um, I say obviously, but not everybody knows that I did start off at Getting Road, which is quite a diverse side and then phase Which five is one, is of, one of our contact centers. one of our contact centers um phase five as well another contact center where i think you've got such a diverse mix of people when it comes to celebrating things like ramadan and eid you've got a lot of a bigger community to be able to share lots of stories and um i spent so much time in those areas where we were able to unite together and break fast together and stuff like that we built our own little community so being able to share that and show people like look at the safe spaces that we have at next to be able to break fast together to pray together to you know talk about the struggles that we might be facing together as well i think is um really nice i think it's a nice it's, it's nice to have and know that you're not gonna feel left out yeah i yeah. think that's the most important thing is having that space to be able to kind of verbal vomit everything out <laughs> and i think as well like um Unity is an employee-led community, isn't Absolutely. it? So you're you're part of that uh, community and on the committee, yes, along with other people, yeah, um, to kind of like you say, like educate and celebrate and all of that. But you are also doing recruitment like all the time as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. So, as much as I'd love to do so much more for yeah, Unity, yeah. Um, I am one of the stakeo members of the team. Um, James is our chair. He's brilliant. He loves getting us involved. Um, I think recently we've had quite a few more people join as well, which That's is great. great. That's yeah, great. from different backgrounds. It was great to see it grow even more across, I think, the whole of Next. And I think that's the thing is we're a network group volunteered um it's easy to have everybody at head office but there's so many people that are getting involved in like retail warehouse Brilliant. the different areas of the businesses that you wouldn't necessarily think like oh wow okay that's interesting mm. like warehouse do so much like to celebrate people's different like cultures and traditions and just put a spotlight on people so seeing them get involved now as well is really mm. nice like um especially because we're all over the uk obviously yeah South M, so uh, and i think as well because next is now you know we are a global brand yeah. a global business we are naturally going to have people that come from different cultures background countries mm. walks of life you name it whatever you want to term it yeah so therefore having something like unity to celebrate and you know showcase that and kind of push that forward yeah i think it's really valuable to be honest yeah yeah really really valuable yeah so why why is it 
what does so you've touched briefly on it then and we're go, going backwards and forwards you'll, it's you'll, cool. get, used, you'll get used to this with <laughs> that's how i talk <laughs> <laughs> it's like oh yeah i've had an idea um with, with Eid, what's um you briefly said like what it means to you like what what do you what does it entail for you what why does it really matter like I think um, for me, obviously, number one, it's part of my faith. So to yeah. celebrate it, number one, is just um, part of me practicing my faith. Um, being able to share it with everybody and what we get up to is, I think, a way to invite people to share their celebrations with us as well. Mm. We do so much. Like the day is insane. Everyone celebrates it differently. But I think the core principle of it is that um, being together that yeah. togetherness nice though yeah. that is nice yeah. yeah and I think when we do it at next and put on a little bit of a, like a buffet or something it's just to show like this is similar to what we're doing at home as well mm. you've got like my, I, I was about to say the aunties but I'm now classed as an auntie so ah. <laughs> you've got well, what, like what is that then what do you mean aunties what's so, that yeah, I know yeah. that's quite a cultural thing as yeah. well like yeah. I think you know uh, people from underrepresented backgrounds we've got huge families in terms of like in our household it's not yeah. just the mom and dad you've got the grandma you've got the cousins you've got everybody kind of living in one household or the same street or close by mm. and um the aunties is normally like the ones in the kitchen cracking on with like no. cooking oh, okay. um, I, I i hope i'm not a stereotype the aunties too much guys yeah. so no one come for me yeah, but um, yeah, yeah. i now class myself as one of them um i used to i was really a bit of a brat in terms of when i lived at home with my parents you know my mom was in the kitchen quite a bit taught me how to do all the baking the cooking and stuff now i'm by myself i do a lot of that i've got no one nagging over my shoulder like, oh. yeah, I'm doing it right. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah so we i think the week leading up to like any eid celebration you'll find um people in the kitchen cooking baking just is food a big thing then around such a big is thing it, is it like is yeah. it like right at the heart of it 100 percent. i yeah. think if there's no food no one's coming <laughs> 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 I mean, <laughs> would you come to an event where there's no food? Yeah, you make a good point. There's got to be snacks. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, and it brings people together. Yeah, I and think... I guess if that's like you're saying, if it's about togetherness, yeah. that's going to bring people together yeah. over... 100% over like, a meal yeah over a meal and sharing your different cultures like um, I come from a really diverse background okay so you've got people bringing their own cultural foods from different like you know where they're from whether it's like Morocco or Vietnam or you know Sweden like you've got different kind of foods and that's just in your family yeah that's just, <laughs> <laughs> and we're calling ourselves the Julex colour chart because you've got someone from everywhere <laughs> in our family and um, I think that's a beautiful thing and why I like to share so much about how beautiful celebrating Eid is because mm. forget just in your family you've got people that you know may not have family and um in our communities it's really important to include everybody and make everybody feel welcomed so whether you're muslim or not come celebrate with us like we'll open oh, our doors nice. to you matt if you want to have a feast come yeah. to my house <laughs> well well if there's food i'll be there yeah, yeah. there's if definitely there's food, food. If, yeah. if anything there's too much food like right i think the last eid i had to tone it down a bit because um i'd made too much so this eid i've got to like prepare myself like right who's actually coming do i need to bake this much do i need to slave away in the kitchen for like 20 24 hours do you just get lost in it though are yeah. you just kind of like it's a bit therapeutic is it yeah oh yeah. okay it's, it's, for me personally some people find it stressful i can i can imagine though if there's a lot of people gathering and you're kind of the host yeah then the pressure because it's such a big celebration i mean it only happens twice a year yeah yeah i can imagine that yeah yeah you know it's it, yeah. yeah, I mean, you want people to enjoy themselves. You want them to like feel relaxed. And I think there's so much that goes on with including the food. So like you've got, you know, the breakfast in the morning that everybody looks forward to. <laughs> that normally takes part at my grandma's. Um, it's like a tradition. We'll go there for like... Oh, I tend to detox from tea during the month of Ramadan. So I have my first cup of tea at my grandma's on Eid. Um, nice. Really weird. Yeah, but I it's something I do. I think no caffeine for a whole month. No then, caffeine for a whole month. Yeah. Ooh. I know. No. I, and that's a part of the spirituality of oh. it. It's like... Uh, on a personal level, I'm just thinking, <laughs> how would I do... Where would I even start? Yeah. I mean, I don't drink do coffee. With, so... Sorry? I don't drink coffee. You don't drink coffee No. So but tea's got more caffeine, I think. Apparently so, yeah. Apparently. I've never... I've not, I've not seen like an official paper on this. Yeah. But, you know, like, <laughs> we'll have I to dig think, one out. I think tea has got more caffeine in than coffee. Gosh. Depending on the coffee you drink, yeah. I think. But I couldn't... But I love it. Yeah. I, I, I know I'm a little bit caffeine dependent. Yeah, yeah. Which is probably not a good thing. No, because you do get a headache when you start coming off it. Do you? Yeah. 
It's Ooh. that like I can feel it. Like this. How long does that last? Uh, just like a couple of days. A oh. couple of days. You get over it. Um, I don't know how you get over it. You just do. You just kind of like <laughs> persevere through. Um, but that first cup of tea, that first sip. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Like you've come off out of the detox, but you're still like. Yeah, you're like, I needed you. I'm never letting go of you again. And then yeah. you've got like a whole year until like you've got to do it again. But um, I think it's just a good way as well to recognise that how lucky we are for the blessings that we have in our lives that's as well. That's a nice way of putting yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, that's really good. And yeah, that's probably one of the biggest messages I should share is that that is one of the things that we are looking at inwards is like all the blessings that we have. There's people around mm. the world that, you know, they don't have as much. So what can we do to help them? And like, you know, what is it that we can cut back on mm. as well? What what difference can it make in our life to kind of give a little bit back and make a bit of a difference, not just like worldwide, but locally as well. So yeah, I think um, loads of people do different things. There's a lot of like feeding um, the homeless as well during Ramadan and stuff like that. I think in Leicester, we've got so many charities, which is so amazing that we do so much at Next as well for charities. It's just nice to see all the different ways that we can kind of help our own city during that month too. Mm. And um, yeah. But I, Do you think that's one reason as well, particularly on the Enderby campus, that mm. it's probably, it's Eid's becoming more of a, well, not more, but is it probably embraced more than in other places because Leicester's so diverse? 100%. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if you walk around the campus, you'll probably find someone from every different corner of the world. Yeah. I think that in itself is beautiful. Like, yeah. I'll have a conversation with one of my hiring managers and um, they'll tell me like, oh, they've just come back from, you know, a certain place in the world. I'm like, oh, what, you go there or to visit family? Oh, wow, you're from yeah. that side of the world. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, I get that a lot. Yeah. yeah I get that a lot. Because it's so mean. unassuming yeah. as well. Like, yeah. I didn't expect that. You, you don't, yeah. And, and, and then you always have to think, and then you kind of go, why did it? Why did I not expect yeah. that? Like, you yeah. know, it kind of changes your... Yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. your view in your terms view. of like not making that assumption. Yeah, yeah. Don't yeah. make assumptions. Like, yeah, yeah. yeah it's so weird. And yeah. you're like, oh, right. Okay. All right. Come back to you. Okay. That sounds good. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. And that's the thing. Like you, I think. I think with me as well. Again, for pushing the whole not pushing but like celebrating Eid as well mm. is is that like there are so many different stories out there like how do you celebrate Eid compared to how I do it um and I think Unity has really done a great job over the especially the past year mm. in opening up more kind of celebrations like mm. Vasaki and Diwali and stuff like that like I know I think last year we had people come and do henna and yeah. you see the similarities as well in how certain cultures celebrate and that's beautiful as well to mm. be able to relate like you may not be the same faith but culturally you have so much in common as well yeah. um so being able to relate that way too i think is pretty and i think awesome. that's why it's important as well to have these com employer-led communities almost as the as the kind of um not driving force because everyone pushes in the same direction but almost to give the um like you've just said that it feels familiar yeah. like you'd hate the business to be doing something and you'd be like what are you doing like yeah. this doesn't feel yeah you it needs to feel like he doesn't it yeah exactly yeah. exactly and it i think you know the team your team our teams have done great <laughs> jobs in uh reaching Lo out lots of the comms team yeah, yeah lots yeah. of the comms team and just uh, the teams in general from our network groups being able to collaborate together and have mm. those conversations and turn around and be like oh this is an idea we have oh, well that's not going to work like for example, whilst we're fasting, no one's going to want to come in in the last week to eat samosas because we're all fasting. So having those conversations, um, you know, is a great way to be have that openness mm. and kind of showcase like, yeah, don't worry, you can ask me about that. It will make it better for the company as well as the experience of the staff that we have mm. when it comes to these kind of events. And openness is really important, isn't yeah. it? You know, I know it's one of our um, like expectations as well to be like open, but I think in this instance, it's so, so key key yeah because if the if it's not there we wouldn't even be sitting here having this conversation anyway. exactly exactly yeah. and it does unity has opened the doors to so many conversations I agree. I agree i've had the most you know strangest conversations with people in terms of like that i wouldn't expect so for example someone asking me for advice on like how to you know, eads are coming up. How do we work this in with making sure our staff's needs are met during that period? Oh, brilliant! Yeah, How which I think that? is stunning. Like that they're even first of all recognizing it, then think considering it, then seeking advice. Yeah, yeah. yeah. 
And I think that's the thing. It's opened that door to be able to be like, oh, I can reach out to this person. Yes. Um, you know, even if it is that what some people might find difficult. I mean, I, I'm quite a vocal person. <laughs> <laughs> I'm all about like sharing yeah. and, you know, making people understand the differences between people. So if someone wants to come around and tell to ask me a question about like, how can I make X, Y, and Z a more like better experience for my staff members that are, you know, going through whatever, then amazing. Mm. Like that's, that I think that's uh, something that we do champion. Yeah. Um, you know, James yeah. will be I, I, I know I was gonna say. <laughs> James is like, right, James, the head of the UT is like, write these down. Like, got yeah, all, got, I'm getting got them all, all secretly in there. But um, yeah, it, I think it's a, it has championed those kind of conversations 100%. And mm. I think what I've been part of Unity for, I wanna say three years, three, four years, um, mainly, I think, it, yeah, we'll go with that. Um, and the conversations I have have been endless. And I think that's what's kept me going with it is when you start these things, the worst case thing is you don't want it to be quiet. Right. You want to be able to have people interact with you. And whether that's like just one person, that's a win for me. Mm. And um, I've had 10 times more than that. So even oh, better. Brilliant. Yeah. Yeah. And, I, and I, think that's, I think that's a really good point. I think one of the things I've found working as well with all the different community communities, um, like committees or steering or whatever we call them, mm. we've done it in the right way whereby we've set up that committee first that's then supported by the business. Yeah. And then we've built that understanding and the reasoning internally for everyone to be, feel like they can be a part of it. Yeah. And then we've showcased it more. Not just, we're not just going, we're going to do this. Yeah. We're just, yeah. oh, should we try this this time? Yeah. And should we not do it? It's like, no, right, let's do this. And then, like you say, continually do this as well. Yeah. Um, and then I think as well, that's kind of, I think in some way that's then kind of reflecting as well, even commercially, like what we do for Eid now. Oh my God, I bet yeah. I bet that's changed loads as well over the years. I buy my Eid decorations from Next. Do you? And I'm not saying that just because I work for Next. <laughs> I legit like um I think it was last year or the year before they did like this gold and black collection. Ooh. I wouldn't have guessed it. And they've done so great in terms of marketing that more better now. But I think back then it was in a store and one of our um employee ambassadors they're nice. the ones who pointed it out to me. Oh, um, really? One of our store ambassadors, they were like, oh, the TV, have you seen these e-decorations? Like, they're stunning. I've gone to store, have a look. And um, yeah, I went in and I bought the whole lot. <laughs> <laughs> bought some for me, bought some for my family. Because normally, um, I think, you know, we are getting better. It's 2024. Mm. Just worldwide, we're getting better in being able to market to all, all different backgrounds mm. and faiths. But before it'd be a case of like ordering online and waiting weeks for it to arrive and, mm. you know, from a different country where now it's on your doorstep to be yeah. able to just pop into your local like store, grab some e-decorations, not having to stress that, like, is it going to come on time? Da, da. So yeah, that was really nice to be able to see like, okay, Next is starting to like expand on their, you know, collection, not mm. just e-decorations wise, which people wouldn't necessarily think, mm. but um, clothing too. Um, I got loads of Eid presents because that's another thing we do is Eid presents. Right. Um, mainly for the kiddies. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's all about them, obviously. Obviously, yeah. So yeah, we um, do the whole like wrapping gifts. Um, it is like, um, it's rewarding, I should say, for us to wear like new fresh clothes the first day of Eid. Okay. So we've got a bit of a tradition in our family of wearing like fresh pajamas the night before. So being able to see like, you know how you get like Christmas pajamas? Yeah. We've got Eid pajamas as well. So I bought loads of my nieces, like the collection that we have, um, really cute, got little like moon and stars and Eid Mubarak Ooh, on them. Nice. They loved it. They absolutely loved it. They were like, oh my God, these are so cute. Like um, nothing basic, just like really cute being able to say like, oh, it's from, they were like, it's from next. I was like, yeah, it's from next. <laughs> So, does, that, um, does that make you feel proud that we do stuff like that? Yeah. 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 I think it's that whole thing around inclusivity as well. Okay. Like being able to walk into a store and see something that you don't have to adapt to like fit your, you know, ways of, let's say you dress modestly, for example. Like you don't have to wear 10 million layers just to like dress a little bit more looser or more modestly. There's something that I can walk in and be like, I can take you right off the hanger, pop it on, no adjustments, don't need to take mm. it to tailor, don't need to go to like, a shop where everyone's going to be buying the same stuff because it's the only shop that mm. caters for, you know, an inclusive kind of, you know, collection, if that makes sense. So um, I do think they've done a great job in terms of the variety that they've had mm. this year and the different brands. Like yeah. there's so many different uh, modest fashion brands as well that we sell as well, which is pretty cool. Um, but yeah, it's just nice because I think growing up, obviously 
we it's great that we've lived in such a diverse city such as Leicester yeah I lived in an area that probably wasn't as diverse so things like Christmas and Easter were promoted more which is absolutely fine but when it came to our celebrations there wasn't much around this so my yeah. mom used to kind of um get us a little Christmas tree and we'd call it the Edmas tree and <laughs> put our presents <laughs> under there so cute. it's nice now to be able to not have to do that because yeah. there's other stuff that we can yeah. do that fits more within our kind of faith and um yeah our aesthetics if you want to put it mm. that way so yeah I think just feeling included mm. no one wants to feel excluded so no and it, it, it goes I'm thinking it just goes right back to our kind of DNI commitments exactly. as well it's because that's all on it's all these all these um, employee-led communities are under yeah. the DNI commitments as well, and you know, one of the things that we say a lot is for people to feel like they can bring the whole self. Yeah, 100%. so if you're seeing it, first of all, if you're if you don't work for Next and you see that we sell that product, you're like wow. Yeah. But then if you see see this like podcast and like yeah. hearing it and going, oh, hang on, there's a whole community dedicated to you know, celebrating and educating yeah. and promoting that, you're going to feel like more welcome than a yeah. company that's like... Yeah, like what does that mean? Yeah, what like, are you want about? Yeah, I mean, I'll give you an example, which I think is a testament to Next, is customer services, for example. Yes. Getting your Eid clothes on time. When I was a customer service manager, I remember somebody like kicking off like... Eid's coming up, I'm so scared, like my parcel's not arrived. And just being able to have somebody that understands that empathy of like God. why Eid oh, is so Oh, so you had a customer, you had a yeah, customer, had a customer right, sorry, you. to yeah, 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 yeah. I had a customer I thought you meant, I was like, I didn't know if no, you meant no, staff. No, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. I should have mentioned, I was it, obviously from my yeah. days in customer services, as a manager, when things get escalated, they get to you. And I yeah. think being in an environment where someone can turn around and be like, I understand how important that is to yeah. you because that's your celebration. Just like how we have the same queries during like Christmas yeah. and stuff, we have the same during Eids, like people will go online, order their clothes for their kids, ready, like I said, fresh clothes for the first day of Eid, fresh pajamas for the night before. It's equally as important. So um, that diversity at Next and being able to turn around and be like, I understand where you're coming mm. from. Don't worry, I got you. I think that's really important. And um, as you know, we've got an amazing international team, you know, that also contributes to that and being able to not just Eid, but other holidays worldwide if you think about like Yom Kippur oh, yeah. and Diwali and all of that as well, like having our international team be able to turn around and be like, I understand how that is important. that's important to you. Let's see what we can do for you. I think that's equally as important. And that's where it comes back to making sure that everyone has that platform where if they have a question, they can get educated about it without feeling like they're asked. No question is a dumb question, isn't it? Like everything. No, I agree with that yeah. massively. Yeah, it's a learning curve for everyone. So massively. ask those questions. Massively. And I don't And I don't think as well, I don't, I, I've, I can't even think of an instance, so probably never, but I've never asked the question and then someone turned around and gone like, <laughs> Like, what, why are you asking that? Yeah. Never, like, yeah. you know, I'd, I'd, be, I'd be comfortable asking you a question about uh, any celebration of Eid or, yeah. fast, or anything like that, or even, oh, why do we do that process? Or yeah. could we do that? Whatever it is, no matter what the question, I've always felt really, really comfortable yeah. asking that. And I think that is where we come with those network groups is you've got network groups that cover different areas obviously you've got able you've got pride, pride yeah um being able to turn around and know that you can go to somebody from any of those network groups and ask a question in confidence that it's going to be met with respect yeah. and like you know what good on you for coming around and turning and asking that question yeah. just like that yeah. hiring manager yeah literally. exactly back, right back to that hiring manager yeah. you know saying you know i've got eads coming up is there anything i should be considering, considering yeah. or doing for for this because yeah. I don't know yeah. yeah 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 exactly I think as well with that it's like um I know we've got prayer spaces at next yeah um not just at head office we actually have them like all, all over, over our um, yeah. things and that's been a really good way of being able to showcase the support that we have you know whilst we're fasting for example um I was walking down to phase five which is a bit of a walk for me but um <laughs> studio um they've got a little space a well-being space which I thought oh, was really nice. nice just had to pop over two minutes prayer's done back to work 
perfect that's made my life so much easier rather than stressing and thinking oh my god I've got this prayer to do and if I don't get it at this time I'm gonna have to make up because we've obviously in Islam we have five prayers Mm. and they're done within a certain time so having a space where the company supports you to be able to do that it takes one less stress off the off your back big time if if someone was listening to this and was kind of going oh you know um I'm not sure I should apply for a role at notes because I don't know if I'm going to feel I don't feel like I'm going to really fit in or Mm. belong or you know maybe there's not anyone like me there or what would you say to that um, get in touch with me I'm a recruiter <laughs> 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 help, help from a recruiter yeah, yeah. Um, not just that but I think and to be fair part of our recruiters as well is being able to turn around and say you know we've got check out our Instagram, check out our, that's what I say. Do you know what? I'm going to give you my selling point for next to answer this question is when I have candidates call and they're, uh, especially I think Gen Z generation, they're big on environment and culture. Um, Not to say as millennials and boomers aren't, but you know, uh, (laughs) the Gen Zs are. They're more aware. Yeah, so much more aware, which, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. And I think being able to turn around and point them to proof is really important. So being able to say, have you checked our Instagram? Have you checked our LinkedIn? Have you checked our Facebook? Have you checked any of our social media pages? Because (laughs) those will show you exactly where you're going to be working. Mm. Um, They're authentic. So authentic. Mm. And especially being able to have like ambassadors as well from different areas of the business. Be like, oh, you'll be working in tech. Why don't you check out this person's profile? And I've done that. I've done it at careers fairs. Um, I've pulled up our Instagram accounts because I just could not get the lingo of what these kids were saying. So I was like, let me show you something. (laughs) just give me a second let me pull out my phone let me show you this is something visual yeah Yeah, yeah. i'm a very visual person so let's have a look together and then they're like seriously i'm like yeah because this is what do you think we just did this as an advert that's too much money to waste me we actually did this in real life so um yeah if you're worried about that then you just have to check our social media accounts to see the proof and i think the testimonials of staff that are working here um i think that's really important as well being able to see that if we weren't happy we wouldn't be here Especially the lifers. Let's, yeah. you know, shout out to all the lifers at Next. There's yeah. a reason we've been here the long, the longest, should yeah. I say. And um, within that, it, we've had such a vast, I think, career path. So that's another really good selling point is no matter what your career path is, you never know where it's going to take you at Next. Nice. Um, I would never have thought I ended up in recruitment. I was in contact center training. Like I've done so many different things that you wouldn't necessarily think she's going to end up in recruitment. Mm. And I think when you go around next and you have those conversations with people, and again, our network groups are a great way of showing this, is you speak to everyone and you realize all the different paths that everyone's come from, not just in the UK, but coming from all the way in Sri Lanka or Poznan and places like that too. So um, yeah, it's... um, I think the storytelling at Next is definitely 10 out of 10. Yeah, nice. I think that's a great place to end. I mean, thank Absolutely. you. Absolutely. Thanks so much for coming on. That's and, all right. Thanks and for also, having me. You know, and, and, fan, and let me just ask simple questions and giving me really good answers as well, because oh, I think it's really important. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's really important. So thank you yeah. for coming on. No, thanks for having me, Matt. Appreciate it.